Hello, thank you so much, Mirad from Yemen, for joining me today. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Um, and today we're going to talk about like learning languages. So like my experience learning Spanish and your experience learning English. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Rochelle, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I feel so proud and honored, you know, to be the, maybe the first Middle Eastern guy who's uh, doing this interview with you. I'm hoping that I'm going to add value and increase the knowledge enrichment for uh, the valid followers. So uh, let's go. Okay, awesome. So a little bit about my experience. Like I always wanted to learn a second language since I was a kid. I There's all kinds of people from all over the world living in the U.S., but a lot of people were living from Puerto Rico speaking Spanish. And so I would hear them speaking Spanish, and I wanted to have that ability to speak another language. So I didn't get the opportunity to learn another language until high school. I was 15 years old, and it was book learning. So we would have the book, and we would learn, and we'd memorize, and we'd have the tests. And it didn't really work very well. I learned a little bit, but I forgot it. Then I went to college. I studied some more. Um, still, again, it was very much book learning. Um, I did have the opportunity to go to Costa Rica in college, and that really helped. But after that, I kind of like went away from Spanish for a long time. And it wasn't until I think my son was born, he's now 18, I kind of started picking up a little bit. I would get CDs from the library. You know, people don't use them as much, but I got CDs and I'd listen to it in the car all the time. They had all these like Spanish, like listen to something in English, then in Spanish and repeat. But seriously, I didn't really, really get started until a few years ago when I kind of got laid off from my work and I started to decide I should try to get another language. I, try, I should try to work on the Spanish again. So what have I been doing since then? I've discovered this method called comprehensible input method, which is the idea that you don't focus on grammar, but instead you focus on listening, listening, listening to the language and listening before you speak. Because if I try to read a book in Spanish, but I'm not pronouncing it correctly, I'm going to develop bad habits. So what I've been doing is listening to podcasts, listening, like watching YouTube videos, putting on the subtitles so I can read along and just really consuming, kind of like trying to immerse myself in the language by news, podcasts, Netflix, everything I, I am consuming, I'm changing it into Spanish or, or watching Spanish content. So that's what's really worked for me. And now I can watch a Spanish program on Netflix and understand it without really watching the subtitles in English. That's so great. And uh, for me, you know, first of all, allow me just to introduce myself. Uh, I didn't introduce myself, you know, to the viewers. So my name is Murad Mohammed. I'm from Yemen. I'm living in Saudi Arabia. I'm 36 years of age. And uh, as I told you, I have passion to English. Actually, I realized the importance of uh, this language in a uh, real age. So I was back in days uh, at the age of 10, trying you know, to find the proper people to speak English with them. Because uh, uh, at that time, it was very hard, especially you know, to find uh, native speakers. So uh, in that time, you know, uh, what was available was the Indians, the Filipinos, because they were capable you know, to speak properly when it comes to English. So uh, you know, I, I don't want to be exaggerated, but uh, since that time, at the age of 10, when I, as I told you, I realized the importance of English, uh, I think you know, English is not only a language for communication. Uh, right now, it became uh, the most important language for any science in this world. When it comes to sport, business, uh, economy, everything. So, if you need, you know, to create a good future for yourself, to under for better understanding, you have to learn English. So, um, uh, so uh, starting from that point, uh, I started to talk with people, uh, interact with them. Uh, I didn't attend any school or any institutes. I do believe that uh, life is the, the best school for anyone to educate himself. So in that days, uh, back in those days, uh, there was no channels when it's like internet or taking this online classes like what we are having now. So uh, I was trying my best. I devoted myself to this language. Uh, I dedicated a lot of my efforts, my time in order to uh, improve my own skills in chemi and communication English. So uh, I think that right now I'm doing you know, good. Uh, I'm still committed to uh, to this language. I don't see that nobody who's a, who came from the, the base of the students can be a, a, like native speakers. So you have to educate yourself to reach the level of 
for professionalism. So this is what I'm trying now. And uh, right now I'm experiencing something amazing. I'm so excited for this show. As I told you, I used to uh, uh, shows with some uh, national uh, national uh, channels, but I don't know. I feel that uh, so touched and excited for this show. So so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And, and um, what I've been finding as far as like, kind of like, my language learning journey is to just really try to immerse my like myself and i've met so many interesting people through this journey like first i got an app called hello talk and it's hard to find language partners it takes a lot of going back and forth and some people just disappear you start to like send messages back and forth and then they disappear off the face of the earth and you start again or you find you don't have anything in common with people so it is really difficult to find those really good language partners but through the years i found some really really good people that i really enjoyed i, I think like some of them are, are like my best online friends people that i can talk to about anything um and Truthfully, I probably speak more English to them and don't practice as much of my Spanish with them, but I've learned so much about people in different countries by talking with them and learning about their life and about what things are like, whatever country that they're in. Um, and so I think it's just made my life much richer to be able to become friends with people from all over the world. And now I don't just focus on trying to speak to people in Spanish speaking countries because now I'm kind of trying to help people learn English. So I've met people in all, almost every continent, except for Australia, um, which is like still like, I would love to have somebody from Australia kind of join our group. But um, it's been very interesting to learn about places that I, I never really knew a lot about. So that has been very interesting to me. It's just part of that whole language learning journey is to like meet people and be able to talk to people. And as you say, like English for one is such an important language an international language, a language that people can like probably get better jobs with if they learn it. Um, for me, Spanish is not as important as that, but it is like one of the second, like probably the second most spoken language in the world. I might be incorrect on that, but it's pretty, pretty widespread. And, um, I think a beautiful language as well. And probably the most useful language for me to learn here in the US because we have so many Spanish speaking people from all over that that would be like the most helpful one for me to learn. So that's kind of why I'm focusing on that one. In the future, I would love to take on one more language so I can call myself a polygot, but I'm just really focusing only on the one language right now. That's so great. You know, I think that we are sharing the same thing, yeah, that we are uh, looking to this language as uh, important when it comes to our daily communication. Here in Saudi Arabia, you know, English is considered uh, the second language. And uh, as you mentioned uh, during your talk, that uh, if you want to find a proper job, uh, a decent uh, career, definitely it became one of the requirements. So this is something that cannot be ignored. And I think it's more important than your own credentials, your certifications. So uh, that's so good, you know, to uh, to boost your skills in, in English and to gain more uh, knowledge in this uh, regard. So uh, I, I do think also that we are sharing the same idea uh, when it comes to of learning English or learning a new language specifically. Uh, from my side, I talk things, uh, as you said, you know, I'm, I'm exposing myself to this language. Uh, I didn't attend any school. I think that uh, the way that the, the babies or the toddlers are learning their mother language is the best way of learning any language in this world. You, know, you should not be committed to learn uh, grammar or to take some you know, uh, courses uh, that is uh, limited to you and it's not uh, selected by yourself. So just go to your, uh, browse your mobile, check the subject that you are interested in. And just keep, uh, you know, searching on it and increase your knowledge about it. I think this is the best way to uh, to improve your skills when it comes to learning a new language. And I think that's the thing, the technology. Like when I was in high school, there was probably cassette tapes or records that I could get from the library. And then in college, there were CDs or something that I could get. But now you don't need that. You can just use your, your mobile, as you said, your, your smartphone, and you can get all kinds of, of audio content, video content in whatever language that you're trying to learn just right at your fingertips. While before, I would have to go, I remember borrowing this big, huge case, and it had all these cassette tapes 
that I could listen to Spanish. I could put it into my tape deck in the car and listen to Spanish. And then sometimes those tapes got stuck. And I don't know if you ever used a cassette tape if you're too young for that, but they would get stuck and you'd have to rewind it. Right. So that was like the only option to be able to listen and kind of like repeat and listen and really like build up your ear for the language. But now you can you can watch all kinds of stuff right on your phone. You can listen to it. I listen to it while I'm cleaning or walking. I listen to podcasts. I actually just got what's called a VPN. My son, who's 18, showed me how to do that. So I can watch stuff that's only available in Madrid because there's different programming on Netflix that's not available in the U.S. apparently. So I can make my computer think it's in Madrid or something. So, um, But in any case, even if I didn't do that, there's all kinds of stuff just right on YouTube that people are making. You can watch um, whatever. BBC has all kinds of programming in Spanish, and you can put the subtitles on. Like I watched, we have somebody in the group from Kazakhstan, and they're having some unrest there, and I was able to watch some really good reporting from BBC done in Spanish and really be able to learn Spanish, but also learn what's happening there in Kazakhstan um, at the same time. Yeah, that's uh, that's so, uh, I agree, I totally agree with you, especially when it comes to the channels of learning a uh, new language. Back in days, we were suffering at this point, especially the point of learning new language, you know, the the, the options was uh, were so limited. You weren't able, you know, to go uh, further in your uh, uh, imagination and learning a new language. So right now things are became more easier, and I think, you know, very simple for uh, especially when it comes to English, just with a click in your smartphone, you can get whatever you want to to do, you know. And I recommend honestly, you know, uh, your channel as one of the good sources of learning English. Yeah, the the the, the techniques, the way you are coming with your content. Uh, contents uh, it's very beautiful and unique it's uh, far away from the classic way where uh, you know you find the teacher or uh, the blogger trying to uh, to teach english in very classic way so what you are coming with is something very beautiful uh, really enjoying your uh, channel and always you know uh, checking for the updates the new contents that you are coming with so uh, this is a message from all the people back in my country i mean just please you know just click subscription and share our channel and you will find a very beautiful content that can boost and uh, improve your English. Well, thank you so much for that. And um, you know, as you were saying, as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, back in the day, like when I was in high school, when you were in high school, you know, college, is that you had to literally go to a country to kind of immerse yourself. But now you can do that without going there. You can actually immerse yourself just with your cell phone. Um, just by, you know, listening to the news, like you can even change the language, but make sure you really, before you change the language to the language you're learning, make sure you really understand it. Cause I did that first with Spanish and then I couldn't figure out how to do something. But once you get to that intermediate level, you can actually change the whole operating system into your, your, um, target language and, you know, just really immerse yourself. But Beyond that, listening to podcast news and, and everything else, you can just really immerse yourself without actually being able to go to that country. And now you can meet people from all over the world. There's all kinds of apps, the WhatsApp groups, the um, Hello Talk, and all these things that you can meet people from other parts of the world and start communicating with them where that was way more difficult to do before. Yes, and one of, one of the things that you, uh, uh, you talked about, which is I think also it's very important, is talking to people who are native from the, the same language that you're trying to uh, improve. And I think, you know, uh, you know, honestly and openly, I'm talking to you frankly, that uh, uh, from my side, I'm a little bit suffering from this point, you know, because a lot of, you know, uh, native speakers, they won't give you that much of time, especially talking to people who are having like a broken language and not able to express themselves. So it is a little bit hard because I, I do believe that one of the important things to improve your skills in learning any language, you should be exposed to that language. You should talk, you should commit mistakes, you should uh, uh, talk and without any hesitation or fears from uh, filling into uh, mistakes when it comes to grammatical mistakes or any type of mistakes. You should build yourself from inside in order to express yourself outside. So this is the thing, you know, I'm so grateful that I'm talking to you. Uh, as yeah. Once again, I'm super excited and I'm talking, experiencing something thing, uh, so great. And my fluency, and it's going, uh, you know, uh, accordingly with the the, the 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 other person that I'm talking to. For example, I'm so lucky that in my in my job, I'm having a foreigners who we are together 
communicating in English. So that gave me opportunity to practice English in daily basis. But I'm not you know, taking things to the professional level where I'm talking to native speakers. So this is one of the opportunities that uh, I got now and I'm trying my best you know, to, to manage it uh, properly. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, There's not a lot of native speakers, like you said, given their time. Um, we have Ken Clay that you know, is in our group and has been in a number of the lives that I've done. Um, we need more people like him that would be, that are just so giving of their time. Like he is also trying to learn other languages, but he's very giving of his time to just, cause he likes to learn about other people in other, other parts of the world. Um, I say, I keep on saying we need more Ken Clays in the world. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm native speakers like just like, like him. And I mean, native speakers like myself, but native speakers like Ken Clay and, and a couple others that I've, I've got to join our, our little group. But um, there are, if you are in all these groups and Hello Talk and WhatsApp, there are not a lot of our native speakers. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Because definitely the, they won't give that much time unless they have uh, they own the own hobby in, uh, in life that uh, they love to discover new cultures, new people from different countries. So also you are one of those people that we need a lot of examples of them in this life. So yeah. keep going, what you're doing is something perfect and something very generous. That's so I really admire the way you are giving your time to people, to interact with them, to, uh, to discover, give them the, the respect they deserve. That's so great, just keep going. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been a great conversation and hopefully we can do this again and hopefully you can attend one of my lives in the future that I'll have. Definitely. It's my honor again. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. I'm hoping that we will do this conversation again and again. And for the, the group conversation, I'm hoping that one time that I will find the time, the proper time that's, uh, you know, uh, match with your own time that we can go live again with the, the beautiful group that we have, have, that we are having in the WhatsApp. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too.